The North American XB-70 Valkyrie is considered one of the most beautiful bomber aircraft ever built. Able to fly faster than any other bomber aircraft and deliver American-style justice at the drop of a hat. But the world doesn't need super-fast nuclear bombers anymore. We can annihilate ourselves just fine with rockets. So what if we were to turn this into a passenger plane? How many passengers would it be able to carry? What would it be like to fly on board? And where would it fly? Normally I would sit down and calculate the numbers myself and you would all be very impressed, but I don't have to do any of that today because it's already been done. That's right, in the 1960s, North American Aviation actually sat down with the proposal to turn their Mach 3 super bomber into a commercial passenger plane. Well before the battle between Lockheed and Boeing for the supersonic jet, before the Concorde, and before an aircraft regularly broke the sound barrier. They figured, since the US taxpayer had already spent $500 million of then $1960, worth around $5 billion today, they would develop two additional XB-70 aircraft as testbeds for the future of supersonic transport in the United States of America. These aircraft would evaluate the logistical issues from technical aircraft specifications to economical conditions and even practical problems, like how to serve meals on board, and trust me, the way they solved this later is hilarious. NAA would pen a conservative report that would balance the risk of new technology with the goal of developing a profitable commercial supersonic aircraft by the early year of 1965. Although they did say that if the aircraft became a matter of national pride, they would be totally able to build it a heck of a lot faster if given the budget. The report would outline three different designs, a rapid production prototype, an experimental civil model, and then a military version. But they would first turn these two extra XB-70s into transports in the wackiest way possible. And because they would be flying four years before any other possible SST aircraft, North American Aviation would be ahead of the curve in supersonic design and logistics, and the American government could claim to have the world's first supersonic transport, beating Europe and the Russians. A win-win if you have it. The first prototype XB-70 would be an engine testbed. They would need to see these new engines under development for future SSTs that would be reliable enough for commercial transport. You can't have a plane knocked out because of engine problems. They would either mount it in replacement of two of the six engines in the XB-70 or they would mount it underneath airflow considerations notwithstanding. It would retract during landing and takeoff into the weapons bay to allow the clearance to land. But it's the second prototype XB-70 that is far more interesting. This one would be changed to carry passengers. The first concept was to see how many passengers they could fit on board without changing any of the fuselage. By removing the military electronics and the fuel tanks from the neck of the aircraft, they could fit in a passenger cabin with 36 seats in a 2x2 two two configuration. Although this cabin would be tiny, with only 100 inches in diameter, it would be smaller than most people would be comfortable with, with no windows either, a single bathroom at the back, and no kitchen. And remember that meal service? Well, it turns out that they realized that most flights would be so fast that there's no need to give people any food on board. They would just have dinner when they arrived. And depending if they kept the fuel tanks, this concept would either have a range of 2,900 miles or 4,000 miles. The later distance is perfect for North American to Europe flights, which at Mach 3 would be around 90 minutes between two destinations, double the speed of the Concorde, which would come eight years later. This design would allow them to understand how passengers experience supersonic travel which was a big issue because you see, at the time, many civilians had barely even been in a plane, let alone at Mark III. The engineers needed to understand how passengers were comfortable, how they would relax, and if they could even sleep. Now, 36 people was hardly a party, and NAA realized that to get the airlines on board, they would need some real passenger numbers. 
To fit more on board, they extended the cabin rearward 240 inches, creating a very slight hump that wouldn't affect the aerodynamics too much. This extra space would increase the seating up to 48 passengers and still fly around 3,850 miles at Mark III. Very impressive. But why stop there? They decided to increase the cabin yet again to 264 inches to a total of 500 inches and have 76 total passengers on board. Now, this would be closer to a profitable design, although they were not done yet. Both of these changes didn't actually increase the length of the fuselage, but just the cabin space on board, allowing to maximize the internal space without having to redesign the aircraft. Although there was an issue, NAA needed to figure out how it was going to board all these passengers in a timely manner on board an aircraft that sits significantly higher than the average 737. And it's something that they didn't offer in this first stage, but they did offer it for their next concept. North American Aviation believed that these first few flights would not be for commercial use and specifically just for the military as the FAA would demand thousands of hours of testing to prove that this concept was safe for civilians. NAA wanted this just for testing and to figure out all of the issues with supersonic travel, and then take the idea back to the drawing board for a clean sheet concept. And this clean sheet program was pretty damn cool, with a science fiction loading ramp, massive capacity, and an extensive range. The engineers in the report figured if they were already asking the US government for more money to build an SST, they might as well add to the wish list with an impressive design. The resulting aircraft design had little resemblance to the original Valkyrie apart from the cabin. It was 198 feet long with a 125 foot wingspan and it could carry between 100 to 150 passengers, depending on how many people you wanted to cram in there. Looking at you, Ryanair. And it flew to Mach 2 at a range of 4,000 miles. Now, that's a step down in terms of the speed from the Mach 3 military version, but they figured that it would be a lot more fuel efficient for the weight. It would also only require a five and a half thousand foot runway to take off from, which at the time was considerably quite long. NAA proposed that they start with a small fleet of 12 prototype aircraft, primarily used for military purposes and cargo operations. As it takes 7,000 hours of flight time for commercial certification with the FAA, they needed a small market first before making an offer to the commercial airlines. Try it before you buy it, so to speak. The military version would be perfect for the transportation of troops, special forces, high-level diplomats, or perhaps even the president himself. It would also be able to carry limited cargo on smaller pallets. While it didn't make any sense as the military had a subsonic transports for most military cargo, they figured that the special forces being deployed anywhere in the world at a moment's notice on the passenger version would equally need to be supported with machinery and equipment just as fast. But remember how they ran into an issue with the XB-70 as to how to load these passengers? The clean sheet version fix this with flare. They tried a few different ways of loading the aircraft from a swinging nose door to a side cargo door, but it was a nose ramp that was the most practical, meaning passengers would be able to board from the tarmac up to the tall aircraft. Amazingly, the report concluded that with the right tenacity, they could have a prototype passenger XB-70 flying by 1965 and a commercial SST prototype by 1967, quicker than the Concorde in more ways than one. The proposal was signed and sent off to Washington where, despite early excitement by the idea, particularly due to Convair working on their own passenger version of the B-58 Hustler, which is a future video, problems with the overall XB-70 program led to the government shutting the door on the commercial version. It's very likely that had the XB-70 program continued with full speed, they would have built these commercial experiments. Alas, they would only end up doing some of the experiments with the XB-70, namely the SST logistics with existing aircraft, but we never saw our passenger version. But I'm not done yet. Now, I want to step back and offer a third option that the NAA didn't consider, a private jet version of the XB-70. 
Now, unlike all the other issues in this list, much which is financial, the XP70 was perfectly suited to be retrofitted for private travel at a billionaire's expense. With a range able to cross the Atlantic in only a few hours, and space for 12 people to travel in luxurious comfort, it really does work well for the billionaire class. But before you jump up and say, why would they bother? Remember that for billionaires, time is the most important thing. And we have seen in the past that they would spend billions just to be a few hours ahead of their competition. So imagine if the military decided to sell a few of these aircraft off, I could see no issue with the creation of a private civil version. Practically, yes, but politically, it would be impossible. But you can see that the concept is sound and we have the technology, just not the will. If you want to see what other crazy designs that North American Aviation came up with for the Valkyrie, I've done a whole video here. They had one that could launch a space shuttle into space and another version made for spying. Much of this video is based off the research of Dennis R. Jenkins who was published in Aerospace Projects Review. Go check it out and I bet you have a great time hunting around some of the most fantastical concepts you've ever seen. But let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.